Thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be covering how to install a second hard drive inside of your Gateway 6831 or Gateway 6860 gaming notebook. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have the properly sized screwdriver such as this Phillips number no. 1 head screwdriver. If you use a smaller or larger screwdriver it may still work but eventually you'll damage your screw heads and you could possibly not even open your notebook again which would be bad. The next thing you want to do is make sure you have the properly sized hard drive. I have here a SATA 3.0 2.5 inch laptop hard drive from Western Digital, 160 gigabytes. This drive will fit properly and it has the proper SATA connection, so make sure you don't try to use an older IDE drive. So, what we want to do is you want to flip the notebook over, so it's going to grab it and flip it over. And we want to remove the battery, so we'll unlock the battery here. Unlock it there and pull it out. This place is the side. Now we want to turn around again so we can get our we can get a better view of the actual hard drive bay. Okay. Now there there are four screws here, 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 and here on top of the hard drive bay, so I'm gonna loosen those. I'll just loosen those. And just loosen until it clicks, and then you can keep moving. Two down, one, three, two to go. Okay, the screws are loose, so you just put your finger underneath this little this little latch here, and make sure all the screws are loose because sometimes they'll stick a bit, like right here. And be careful, be very careful not to break the tabs in here and here. There's two plastic tabs, so pull up slowly and make sure to reserve those plastic tabs because you get if you take those out then you're really you're screwed. So we now see two hard drive carriers. So this one is full and contains a drive, this one is empty. So you're gonna try to you're gonna get out this little lip, this little plastic uh, lip here, with, and it has a little arrow, you're just gonna pull on that, and the tray comes right out. Now you'll notice that um, that there's a bit of a silver material over the SATA connector. That's just that's normal. It's something Gateway puts in there. So you'll want to just very carefully pull that out. If so I can just get you just pull that out. Careful not to bend anything. And I just noticed something new Gateway has put in, because uh, in my 6831 it didn't have this, but it seems like there's kind of a damper pad in here now to keep the hard drive from vibrating a lot. And that's nice. That's a nice feature to put in. It'll give your hard drive some cushioning and extend its life by a few years maybe. Probably a few months, but it'll make it less susceptible to uh, accidents. So I forgot to get my screws, so I'm just going to grab those real fast. We'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. You're going to need the standard laptop hard drive bay screws for this operation. Uh, those are the only size that will work, and Gateway does not include any screws with their laptop. So, I just have a little bag here I bought on eBay. It's got about probably 20 of these things. And it's good to have a lot of them laying around. So, I'm going to grab four. And uh, again, for these, you need a Phillips number one. Now, the way you place the hard drive into the carrier. It's just um, you actually place it in facing like this. You just, you place it in facing like this, and make sure your screw holes are lining up, which they are. And I'm going to add those screws in, and just uh, to each side. And if, if and if you're in a rush and you really want a second hard drive in there but you don't have those screws, you can just take uh, take two screws from the, the the installed hard drive bay and put those into the second hard drive. And now two screws is more than enough to hold in a hard drive into a hard drive bay. So, but still, I recommend using four screws. Just uh, just using four screws is better. So, just putting these in two down so far. Ah, just lost my screw. Let me get that back. 
All right, I'm just putting these in. And this is not a magnetic screwdriver, by the way. It's just I'm, I'm just sticking it on there. That's, you can see how well it fits is how the screw is sticking on there when it's not being tightened. So I ne never use a magnetic screw with a computer. Never, because you can destroy it, especially with the hard drive. I already have data on this drive, so I'm not going to be covering how to format how to format it, or I'm not going to be formatting it, but I still, I still have data on this drive, and I don't want to lose any of it or damage anything on the drive. So one more screw to go, and then we are good. So that screw is in, and now it's uh, the hard drive is installed into the hard drive bay. So now we're just going to flip it over, and you can see if you notice the small metal, these small metal, uh, these small metal pegs here. You want to line those up. And when you slide it in, just to slide in, I'm just checking my screws one more time. Okay, screws are good. You want to, you might want to tuck in the uh, thing just to make it look good. Uh, and you're going to want to line it up carefully. There should be not really much effort. Push down just a bit. And slide it forward slowly. Make sure it's locking in properly. Okay, it's in. And now we have a second hard drive installed. So we're going to take the cover. And these screws are captive. They will stay in there. No matter what you do, these screws will stay in. Which is a nice, uh, nice thing that a lot of laptops are doing nowadays. Because I remember taking apart some older laptops and having to hold on to those little screws. But having captive screws is not a lot better. So now you want to tighten up these, um, tighten up these screws, just nice and easy, and, yep. And I, I suggest doing this with a static strap, I know I'm not wearing one, I'm kind of seeing a bad example, but it's uh, always a good idea just to use a static strap, just to keep it safe. So, we're securing these screws. All right, these screws are secure. So now we're going to reinsert the battery. And I'll flip this over and start it up. And fire it up. And as we can see in the disk management console, I now have two drives. I know you can't really see that much, but the two blue lines just uh, represent the two drives. And uh, now I have a total combined storage space of about 450 gigabytes, which is plenty for me. Since I only have like 20 gigabytes of iTunes, probably about 100 gigabytes of games, and maybe about I don't know, 30 gigabytes of videos. It's uh, plenty of space for me, really. And uh, yeah, the hard. It's a bit noisier with two hard drives, and the battery life is going to take a small hit. But I think it's worth it for the data redundancy and just to increase uh, storage space. Because uh, I don't know, it's really worth it. And maybe in a few months, so I'll throw in those new uh, 500 gigabyte drives that went on sale yesterday from Samsung. That'd be nice to grab a pair of those, put those in RAID uh, zero, and then have a terabyte of space in your laptop. That'd be a nice thing to do. But. Uh, I'll probably save that for when I eventually buy my Alienware uh, M15X because that's, that's the next laptop I'm looking at after this one is uh, ineffective. So, yep, that's the video. And if you want to see some gaming on this laptop, be sure to check out my crisis videos on all my crisis performance. Uh, and those will show you just how, how certain games will run in this laptop. And, yep, thank you for watching. Listen up. We've tracked the distress signal to a valley three clicks due east. Cycle and I are inbound. Get to the rendezvous, but be advised. Enemy forces...